Olmstead was interesting in that he never practiced alone. He brought and created landscape architecture out of the interdisciplinary, as an interdisciplinary effort. He always used the best architects. Uh, uh, he always used the best uh, uh, geologists. He always used the best water and soils people. He always used the best engineers that he could find in putting his work and his efforts together. And it's interesting to note that before Olmsted was doing all of this, he had come to Texas. He was a great masterful journalist and writer. And his book on uh, travels through Texas is an important document because it, in a sense, is landscape architecture. Because the essence of travels through Texas is the descriptions of the land and the people on it that he wrote. For instance, one of the things that he talked about was the difficulty of hunting buffalo in Texas. And you say, w w why is it hard to hunt buffalo in Texas? You go out to the hill country right now, and you can see a buffalo or a deer and get a shot on them. You couldn't see them because the grasses were taller than a buffalo. Now, those grasses are remnant. They're gone. Those blue stem grasses you no longer see. I once traveled around San Antonio trying to find a stand of blue stem grass. I virtually had to go five or six miles along a railroad right away to find a stand of blue stem. You want to know why the Indians burned it? So that they could hunt the buffalo because they couldn't find the buffalo. Buffalo's this high. This whole place was covered with grass. If there hadn't been the grass there, there would be no Edwards Aquifer because it's the plants, the grass, the blue stem that collects the rain and with its roots transfers this water to underground storage systems. We know that. These grasslands go from Texas all the way up through uh, to the Great Lakes and recharge all of those aquifers. The, the grasslands are extremely important. And they harvest water, not only rainfall, but think about it. You know how our temperatures change here drastically? In the morning, it's cool. In the summer, it's hot. But if you go out and look at grasslands in the mornings, what are those leaves, those millions of leaves, that huge area covered with? It's covered with mist, condensation. And as it heats, it condenses goes into the crown of the plant and into the ground and into the aquifer. So it's not only harvesting rainfall, but it's harvesting the humidity in the air each and every day, even the days that it doesn't rain. Olmsted was important because we virtually had no record of how tall those grasses were unless you look through that book, Travels Through Texas. So he was a recorder of what he saw. And to me, Olmsted, who founded the profession of landscape architecture, knew back then what this profession had to do. It was not until perhaps in the 60s that landscape architecture rediscovered itself as uh, uh, a group of individuals or a profession that assessed the conditions of land and worked with people who wanted to put something on it and how you reconcile uh, the, what you're doing to the land in terms of what you want and, and not denigrating it, and, and how to be socially responsible in your use of that land.